More than a week after Election Day, our nation remains divided. President Donald Trump has not conceded, and his team is pursuing lawsuits amid allegations of voter fraud. This, as presumptive, President-elect Joe Biden moves forward with his plans for transition. Joining me now on Skype to talk about the way forward is Robert George McCormick, professor of jurisprudence and director of the James Madison Program in American Ideals and Institutions at Princeton University. Robbie, welcome back. Always great to be with you. Um, as you know, several media outlets have called the presidential election in favor of Joe Biden. President Trump has not conceded and is also pursuing legal avenues based on claims of voter fraud. Robbie, what are your thoughts as you watch this all unfold and its significance? Well, my thoughts are that we have a system. We have a set of procedures. Uh, we have rules for recounts. We have uh, courts for challenging uh, electoral irregularities. Uh, the president and his supporters think that they've got evidence. Uh, they will present that evidence in court. Uh, the courts will decide uh, the question. There are procedures for recounts for in, Georgia, in Georgia, for uh, for example. Uh, that will be followed. My understanding now is there's going to be a hand recount in Georgia where the vote was uh, close. So my advice to everyone is to stay calm. Uh, the system will work. Uh, we have good institutions and good procedures. The courts are open. Uh, we will get a resolution of this in due course. Uh, in the meantime, just stay calm. That's all we can do. Uh, Joe Biden has vowed throughout the campaign and again last Saturday to govern as an American president, working as hard for those who didn't vote for him as those who did. Now, given the deep divide in our country right now, how do you think that message is being received or do you think it's just falling on deaf ears? Well, I'm afraid I can't believe that um, Joe Biden actually means it. Um, this has been a very uh, polarized election. Both candidates uh, contributed to the rhetoric that caused it to be uh, so polarized. The country's polarized. Uh, the, the campaign reflected that polarization. Uh, Joe Biden has committed himself to a set of policies that are simply antithetical to the views of many, many of our fellow citizens. I'm one of them, especially when it comes to issues of the sanctity of human life, marriage and the family, religious liberty and the rights of conscience. He has vowed on the very first day of uh, a Biden administration uh, to repeal crucial uh, pro-life protections, such as the Mexico City policy, to begin pouring more money uh, into abortion, uh, not only here in the United States, where he would repeal the Hyde Amendment, but internationally, turning the faucet back on uh, at even a higher volume or volume flow uh, for, um, for Planned Parenthood. Uh, he has vowed to uh, make a high priority, the highest priority, the Equality Act, which I really believe is an inequality act, which in the name of advancing LGBTQ rights will profoundly undermine uh, the freedom of Catholics uh, and other believers in traditional morality and marriage and the family. So there's no way if Biden is faithful, as he undoubtedly will be, uh, to those who uh, put him in power. Uh, that uh, he will not act in such a way that uh, will deeply alienate uh, a substantial portion of the population. Uh, Robbie, in your opinion, what do you think it's going to take to unite us, given the fact that, you know, we're up against so much right now and not even just the election? Well, it's hard to see uh, a way through to unity here. Um, the country is just very, very badly polarized. We just have to try to uh, come to terms with that division in the country. The fact that we have to live with each other, uh, despite the fact that we profoundly disagree on some very, very important issues. Uh, if indeed there is a Biden administration, that Biden administration will once again sue the nuns, sue the little sisters of the poor to try to enforce the contraception abortifacient uh, mandate uh, uh, that uh, uh, is in federal law uh, as, as they interpret it. So uh, uh, it's hard to know uh, how we get out of that, uh, but we, we're going to have to learn to live together. I, it would be good, I think, if uh, politicians and others who are high profile uh, would set a good example in their rhetoric, and neither President uh, Trump uh, nor Vice President Biden has been exemplary in the rhetoric they have uh, have used to try to uh, avoid 
causing the kind of bitterness and hatred that we have between citizens uh, today. But the disagreements are very, very deep. I think rhetoric matters. I think the language is important. Uh, but those differences will not go away no matter what language we use. I think the key thing actually is that we need to not lose faith in the basic system, in the constitutional system. And that's the problem right now with the uh, circumstances of the election. Uh, any way you look at it, half the population roughly is going to think that this was an illegitimate election in the same way that in 2016, 40 percent or more of the country believed that it was an illegitimate election, believing that there was Russian interference in the election that had put Trump into office. So uh, you had in 2016 Democrats thinking it's an illegitimate presidency. If you get a Biden presidency, you will have in 2020 Republicans thinking that you have an illegitimate uh, presidency. Uh, people do not believe the system is working, that constitutional norms and structures are being uh, respected. It's a dangerous situation, and I, I wish I had some words of comfort there, but I don't. It's a very dangerous, volatile situation. Yeah. Well, Robbie, thanks so much for coming on. We do always appreciate your analysis and hearing from you. Robert George McCormick, Thank Professor you. of Jurisprudence and Director of the James Madison Program in American Ideals and Institutions at Princeton University. Always great to be with you, Robbie. Thank you.